Well, we finally have reached the end of uh, Advent. This is the last Sunday uh, in this season of Advent. That means Christmas is coming this week. Time for uh, busyness, right? Uh, last minute shopping, getting ready for family and friends possibly, watching all of your favorite Christmas movies. You know, you got to get those in. Uh, one of our uh, family favorites uh, when it comes to Christmas movies uh, is uh, A White Christmas. Uh, any here, anybody here like a, a white Christmas? Most people, right? I think everybody does. Uh, anybody uh, seen it yet? Nobody's seen it yet? Okay, good for you. You're living fully into Advent, I take it, uh, not, uh, not going on to Christmas yet. You know, I was really surprised, actually, when showing it to my kids, you know, because I, I love it and have always loved it, and I uh, thought for sure they would think it was kind of old and boring and antiquated, but they love it. Uh, they love watching that movie, uh, and so uh, it's one of the things we look forward to uh, during watching all the different uh, Christmas movies. But there's one of the lesser-known songs songs uh, in, the, in the movie. Uh, it's titled, uh, Count Your Blessings Instead of Sheep. Uh, do, you, do you remember that one? Uh, it's uh, the one beautiful song Bean Crosby is uh, singing to uh, Rosemary Clooney. Uh, and I won't sing it because I couldn't do justice, right, to uh, Bean Crosby's voice. But uh, he's trying to comfort her. She's having trouble sleeping, right? And she says, when I'm, when he said, when I'm worried I, and I can't sleep, I count my blessings instead of sheep, and I fall asleep counting my blessings, Right? It's, uh, it's a pretty song, uh, of course, then I think every song that Bing Crosby sings is a, a beautiful song, right? Uh, but then, like, if you go on to the rest of the, the song itself, uh, it goes on to kind of talk about what it is that those blessings are, right? Why, what blessings he counts, and he talks about the money he has in the bank uh, and the kids that he has in the nursery as being the signs of the blessings that he tries to make sure to take count of in his life, and as he does, obviously the worries of the world fall away, uh, and he has great peace and can now sleep, uh, and, and there really is something to that. That true blessing will give us a sense of peace and joy, even in the midst of uh, when things are difficult in our lives and we can't sleep. Uh, it is a beautiful song. Again, everything that Bing Crosby sings is, <laughs> and so uh, it's great. Uh, and, you know, we throw around that word blessings a lot, don't we? I think we hear it a lot, especially in the South, especially in the church. I think Christians say it all the time. Uh, we talk about just how blessed we are. You know, we're so blessed. Uh, and what we, I think, usually really mean by being blessed is that, you know, that we're happy and we have so much to be thankful for. You know, that's usually what we mean by blessing. We say God is blessing us when we have the stuff that, that we really want or the things in our lives have, have turned out the way that we wanted them to turn out. That's when we, we say, you know, we are truly blessed. God must be really happy with us since he is showing us so much favor. Uh, it's then uh, that we truly feel fulfilled and happy and therefore we must be blessed by God, right? We must be. But do you know uh, what I never have heard anyone ever say? <laughs> when life's falling apart, when, uh, when the marriage is strained, when kids are estranged, our, our health is failing, when, when we've lo lost a job or, or jo our job just stinks, uh, when we don't have all the things we want, and things have not turned out in our life the way that we had dreamed and hoped that they would turn out. I never hear anyone say in those moments, I am truly blessed. God's favor must really be upon me right now. We don't, we don't say that, do we? And we don't hear anybody else say it then. I think the struggle is, is that we have this tendency to mistake happiness and, and fulfillment in our lives, feeling that way, uh, for God's blessing in our lives. So that when we're not happy and fulfilled, it must mean uh, that God's favor and joy have been removed from us for some reason. Uh, either we did something, uh, or to displease God, or it's just uh, most often, and the problem with that is it most often results in feelings of bitterness that we have against God, and bitterness with ourselves uh, for our own failures. 
That's kind of the result of thinking about blessings uh, in, in those ways. If you've ever read the book of Job, it's really all about this. This is, this is the main topic, and this isn't a sermon on, on Joan, but Job, Job. But, you know, it's really all about an understanding of what God's blessing means in a person's life. Job was a man of great wealth and possessions. He had a wonderful, big family. We're told that uh, he was blameless and he was upright. Uh, he was one uh, who, was, who feared God. And and turned away from evil. That's what we're told about Job in, in the beginning. And God did, we're told, told, take delight in Job. He took delight in him. Yet Satan took exception, right? And said, he is only upright and blameless and fears you to God because you've blessed him and because you've given him all this, this stuff of a wonderful and a fulfilled life. That, that was Satan's uh, rebuttal. So Satan equated obedience and devotion to God as the result of material blessings uh, in a person's life. And so Job then becomes an example of how obedience and devotion to God plays out when the happiness and the fulfillness, uh, fulfillment of material possessions and good health is removed from a person's life. But I think the idea also plays out in, in our own lives all the time. When, when all is well, we have what we want, we feel fulfilled, we, we feel like God has blessed us, and then that kind of motivates us to try harder, to be a little bit better, to do good things, try harder to please God, so he's going to continue, that he'll continue to, to do that for us, give us all we desire, that he'll make us happy in everything that we're doing, but life doesn't work out that way. It doesn't work out that way. Maybe we experience seasons of that kind of fulfillment and just happiness of the way things are going. But life's full of bitter disappointments. Life's full of our own failures. Life's full of regrets. And sometimes, even if we have all that our hearts desire, we still don't feel truly happy or fulfilled in any way. Have you ever been to a school reunion? I'm sure you have, right? Or did you avoid them like the plague? Um, you know, but if you, did, if you went or if you didn't go, it was for the same thing probably happened to you, right? Uh, this whole struggle uh, about this, how we view God's blessings in our lives and, and what we really think of it, or get, always get exposed in those kind of reunion times. I went to a, a funeral this week that served kind of like a reunion. It was for a, a childhood friend's father who died. And uh, I think every, all of my childhood friends were all there. Uh, and, and as I was there, I was just looking at their lives, uh, super successful, uh, become very wealthy the, you know, all these things, and you immediately start thinking, well, gosh, they're blessed. Man, I must be doing something wrong. You know, I was sitting there during a time at the reception, some people were talking up front uh, about the person who had passed away, and I found myself just kind of looking down. We were standing on this patio and looking around, and, and I never noticed this stuff, but for the first time, I just, I noticed the, the guy's shoes they were wearing. I was like, they're all wearing the same shoe, and it's a really nice shoe. And then I looked at my shoes, and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> it's like, they must be really blessed, but we fall into that trap, right, of like, you know, now suddenly comparing, like, blessings, and what does this mean for me? What does all this mean about blessings, and more importantly, what does it mean about God's blessing in our lives? Are, are we blessed when, uh, when everything's going well? Are we being judged and condemned when things aren't going so great? Or is reality of it that we are all mixed up and confused in our understanding about what God's blessings really are and what it's truly about? How are we to make sense of what God's blessings really mean about our lives? Friends, the gospel of Jesus Christ completely transforms our understanding and our experience of the blessing of God and the joy and the peace that flows out of his blessing into our hearts. And we can see how the gospel transforms God's purpose uh, for blessings. And all in our, in our gospel reading this morning from Luke chapter 1 and the life of what we read about the mother of Jesus, the blessed Virgin Mary. 
Just prior to the events of our passage uh, this morning, the angel Gabriel, who was sent by God to Mary, the virgin who was betrothed to be married to a young man named Joseph, uh, Gabriel told her that she would conceive and give birth to Jesus, the Son of the Most High, and that he was to be given the throne of his father David, and that of his kingdom there would be no end. Well, understandably, Mary was a little bit distressed uh, at, this, uh, at these words. She said, how can this be since I'm a virgin? And then Gabriel explained that the Holy Spirit would come upon her and the power of God would overshadow her. And at, that, at the end of it all, uh, Mary simply but profoundly proclaimed, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. That's how she responded in the end. Uh, Despite the absurdity of what she had been told, Mary believed and she submitted to God's plan. She believed and submitted to it. But Gabriel also told her in that same message about her cousin Elizabeth, that Elizabeth was six months pregnant uh, in her old age. And so this is where our reading this morning picks up with what Mary did upon hearing that bit of news uh, about her cousin Elizabeth. Uh, She heard the the amazing and miraculous news about her cousin, and so immediately she went to go see her. We're not sure exactly the location of where Elizabeth was, but it it was a couple days journey. This wasn't just a simple trip. She wasn't just going next door to hang out with uh, her cousin. Uh, This was a couple days journey. And when Mary arrived, we're told that the baby, who was John the Baptist in Elizabeth's womb, leaped for joy. The baby leaped for joy. And then full of the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth uh, explained with a loud cry to Mary and who else might have been there, we don't know, uh, who might have heard this message, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Elizabeth was full of the Holy Spirit and declared in that, in that blessing, in that covering and fullness of the Holy Spirit that Mary was blessed, that Mary was blessed, meaning Mary enjoyed the favor of the Lord in her life. If there was anyone who had the right to call themselves blessed by God, it was definitely Mary, right? Right? I mean, you might be able to say that you have a healthy bank account, that you uh, have lots of grandkids, that your health is good, and, and count that as your evidence, you know, in your, uh, in your account for uh, blessings. Uh, but Mary trumps you. She trumps you. Uh, and don't you just hate that? Don't you hate it when someone one-ups you? Uh, I hate that. Uh, When someone, you know, in your group of friends or family or something, it always has that ability to one-up you. Uh, You share something special about yourself, something you're especially proud about, right? Uh, And then you can't, by the time you barely get the last word out of your mouth, they're already going on to uh, something greater and better about themselves. Uh, maybe you share with about your grandkids and how, uh, well, how great they're doing in school. They made the teens list, made really good grades, and then immediately they share how wonderful that is. But did you know that my little Johnny just uh, aced his SAT and got a full ride to Harvard? <laughs> it's kind of like that, right? You're getting one up. Mary might not ever say it, And she certainly wouldn't, but when it comes to comparing God's blessing in our lives, Mary can always one-up us. (laughs) She can always one-up us, as if carrying the Son of God is such a big deal, right? Well, how has God blessed you in comparison? Because everything else just pales in comparison to Mary's blessing, doesn't it? No doubt Mary wins the award for the most blessed, at least... I think, in our worldly way of thinking about what God's blessings are really all about. Uh, God showed the most favor to her for sure. And never mind that God's blessing in her life, if you really think about it, uh, it came with social stigma, family shame, ultimate pain and sorrow, and watching her own son die on the cross. Mary's the blessed virgin Mary for a reason. But why Mary? Why Mary? 
Why does God's blessing fall upon her? And what is the reality of God's blessing in her life? Because I think that's what's going to really teach us about what God's blessings are really all about. In verse 45, it tells us the source of Mary's blessing. Uh, Pay attention because it's important because it completely transforms our understanding of God's blessings in our lives. In fact, it turns our idea of blessing completely upside down. In in verse 45, Elizabeth concluded her spirit-filled proclamation over Mary with these words, And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Now, you would expect uh, Mary's blessing status to be the result of good behavior, clean living, uh, the devotion to God, her acts of piety would make her worthy of this incredible designation from God and his favor. Uh, That would satisfy at least our common understanding of God's favor and blessing in a person's life. But that's not what the Holy Spirit revealed at all through Elizabeth. Mary's blessing from God didn't have anything to do with any of that stuff. Mary was blessed because she believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Mary's blessing came by faith and trust in God. Not in what she had accomplished or what she had achieved or who she was or what she had or what she didn't have. She believed God that he would do what he promised he would do. That he would bring the fulfillment of what he had promised. Through Mary, therefore, we learn that God's blessing does not come by our own works or efforts, but rather by the finished... Again? Hmm. I'm having trouble hearing you. It's Siri. <laughs> she, she's listening. That's never happened before. Through Mary, not Siri, we learn that God's blessing comes not by our own works or in our own efforts, but only by the finished faith and the finished work of Jesus Christ for our salvation. And that, my friends, turns our way of thinking completely upside down. Blessing in a person's life comes by faith, not by one's works or best efforts. Faith in God alone and in his plan alone for our salvation. That's what God's blessing is all about. Friends, blessing has nothing to do with our own happiness and and fulfillment that we feel in any one given moment because of what we have and because of how all the things are going in our lives. It has nothing to do with uh, what we possess or our own good health. God's blessing comes comes when we receive by faith the finished work of God through his son, Jesus Christ. God's blessing is received when we trust fully in him for our salvation and our righteousness before God. Because it was there, after living the life that we should all live, that Jesus died the death that we deserve. He took our place. He paid the full penalty for our sin and rebellion, believing that fully is what a blessed life is all about. Depending upon that alone is what a blessed life is truly about. That's what God's blessing is all about, receiving by faith what God has done for you. Blessing is received. It's something that's never earned. But what about the fruit of that kind of blessing in your life? The blessing that is received by faith in Christ's finished work on the cross for us. What's the fruit of that? When we receive that blessing, does it mean that a life of prosperity and happiness? Does it mean we'll now receive all that our hearts desire? Well, Mary in her song, following Elizabeth's proclamation, said this in verse 47. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. See, the fruit of the blessing in Mary's life was joy. The pure joy of salvation that would come through the baby that was in her womb. Joy being that experience of having her life completely fulfilled by God through Jesus. And salvation being the peace of God that only Jesus can bring. The blessing of God in Jesus always bears fruit of joy and peace in our lives. 
This is why the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans in chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. We inadvertently, we, we, we intuitively though want, uh, want blessing in our lives because we know that it's going to bring us some sense of peace and joy into our hearts. It goes back to that song, <laughs> that song from A White Christmas. They knew that there was this idea of blessing somehow would bring about peace uh, and comfort. We seem to know that. The only problem is that we get all mixed up in what the object of our blessing really is. So we seek out peace and joy from material things in our lives. From our families, from our bank accounts, from our jobs, from our social status, from our our good health. And we equate blessing to all of those things. And don't get me wrong, these are wonderful things. These are things to be thankful for. They're important. They're good things. But when they become the object of our blessing, they always turn on us. They always turn on us. They will all fail us and betray us at some point. And when they fail us, they go from being blessings that bring us peace and joy, and they turn into curses that bring us heartache, pain, condemnation, and bitter disappointment. When we make those things our ultimate peace and joy, they always Betray us. The gospel of Jesus Christ brings us freedom from that bondage, from that bitter disappointment. When we receive by faith the blessing of God and the finished work of his son, Jesus Christ, we're given a blessing that bears the fruit of joy and peace no matter what pain and heartache and disappointment that life may throw at us. The true blessing of God in our lives is the fruit of Mary's womb. You know, this week, as we continue to prepare ourselves and to walk towards Christmas, make sure you count your blessings. Not the stuff you have or the happiness that you possess because everything's turned out the way you've wanted it to. Receive by faith the peace and the joy of God's blessing in your life through the finished work of His Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. And let that blessing May that blessing guard your hearts and minds for all eternity. Amen.